You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 82. The objects from these caves gives us an intriguing view of how people in America lived thousands of years ago. Now this is the fourth episode in our study of Native Americans. In previous episodes, we followed the first Americans across the Bering Land Bridge from Asia to the deep frozen continent of North America, following huge mammals like mammoths and mastodons. Well, the continent was so different then. Camels, giant bison, and even giant beavers shared this continent for the first time with Homo sapiens. And much of both North and South America was covered in ice sheets as much as two miles thick. When climate change occurred, all of this changed. Areas that once were moist now became deserts. Melting ice formed expansive lakes, inland seas in much of today's West. Some of these expansive lakes remained until recently, as recently as the years of the Dust Bowl. Now these huge animals died out, but at least some of the people survived to become ancestors of today's Native Americans. Even the land which they crossed to come here flooded. There was no turning back. The first Americans were now committed to these continents, passing their DNA and hard-won lessons down to hundreds of generations, all the way to today's Native Americans. At least that's the story researchers tell us. They also concede that other groups came in later migrations, like ancestors to today's Navajo people. There are many stories to be told about the past, sometimes the distant past. The first Americans left a few material clues, but no written accounts that would reveal their beliefs and worldview. We do know that for some, their greatest legacy is survival. Now, perhaps in the stories of their descendants, we can come to know something more about them. In our last episode, we shared part of a Cherokee origin story. Let's begin this episode with more of that story. Then we'll learn more about the language of relating events from the past. The Cherokee story already explained the creation of the Cherokee country and the solar cycle as well as plants and animals with which we share the earth. Now the story continues to include people. It says in the story, men came after the animals and plants. At first there were only a brother and sister until he struck her with a fish and told her to multiply. And so it was. In seven days a child was born to her and thereafter every seven days another and they increased very fast until there was danger that the world could not keep them. Then it was made that a woman should only have one child in a year, and it has been so ever since. Now, stories like these form the basis for how life was supposed to be lived, plus they explain things like why children are not born after only a few days, and the knowledge that a population can get too big to be supported by the earth. Seems they may have been the first to consider carrying capacity. Now this book entitled Indian Tales by Jaime de Anjulo tells more stories. The stories are fun to listen to, but I find they're also revealing of some of the beliefs, attitudes, and approaches to life that are common among many Native American tribes and nations. Jaime de Hanulo spent 40 years among the tribes classified as Pitt River for the construction style of their houses. Now, these people are from Northern California. De Anjulo came to live with this group as an ethnologer using science methods to study American Indians. Well, he soon learned to ignore the academic guidelines and to stop asking what he called foolish questions and simply learn by observation and participation in the community. I suggested in an earlier episode that we should listen to stories, but we should always ask ourselves, who is telling the story and why are they telling it? In the case of De Anjulo, he wrote these stories to share the knowledge he had gained in his time living with the Pitt River tribe. 
He also wanted to entertain his children with these tales while remaining true to the cultural nature of these people. In his preface, Don Hello asserts that these tales are his alone, taken from stories told by various groups, but not a verbatim retelling of Native American stories. Now here's a view of the Pitt River in Northern California. The river cuts deep canyons through this high country. Downstream, we see an impressive waterfall known today as Bernie Falls. Don Hello's tales are set in this country as a family travels to visit relatives. In this book, the relatives are those of the family's mother and are located near the coast. So they're traveling from their home through the country of various other groups to reach their destination to the west. This is the kind of structure described in many of the locations they pass through. Jaime de Angelo has seen the construction of many of these houses during his time with the Pitt River people. In his preface, he describes each step of the construction, including a great deal of discussion and arguing about the right way to do it. Now you'll notice the ladder and the smoke hole. Don Hello explains that people entering and exiting the house do so through the smoke hole, yet they don't get burned by the fire. He explains that the fire is always small. Before beginning the story, which I plan to share in small parts across multiple episodes, I should tell you something about this traveling family. The father is a bear. Yes, a real bear, like a black bear. The mother is an antelope, and the young boy is a fox. There's also a baby on the mother's cradle board. The baby is a quail. Now, the names of these animals are also the names of the characters. So the father is bear, the wife is antelope, his son is fox, often called fox little boy, and the baby is quail. They are animals, and they all talk except the baby. This is consistent with many stories told by Native Americans of a time when animals talked. With that set up, let's start the story. 